Okay, talk a little bit about last week. That was a, it was a good week for our team preparation-wise, playing our first early game. Thought we played well. Worked out pretty good to be able to rest our starters basically for three quarters. And uh, got a little better, but we got some good work out of a lot of our younger guys and guys that we might need in the next uh, three and a half weeks. Uh, excellent performances out of, uh, obviously, Gunner, 15 for 15. I don't think I've ever heard of that, but a perfect rating for a quarterback and really played well mentally <laughs> as well as physically. We uh, had, obviously, a good performance out of Shaq, breaking the all-time reception record, and uh, we had the best play from one offensive lineman that we've had since I've been here in Parker Anger. It was, uh, it was good to see him play up to his potential, and it's hard for an offensive lineman to get 100% technique, 100% grade in, in assignment. Uh, very unusual, so uh, very good performance out of him. So we got that one out of the way. I thought we got, uh, got a lot of things done. Unfortunately, you know, uh, UCF was uh, kind of uh, in the dumps about losing their coach, an unfortunate situation. and. Uh, uh, feel for them as they go through the rest of the season, but it is what it is. Now we're getting ready for our, uh, a big game for us, a big game for one of our teams in the conference, Houston, who I think is probably the, the playing the best, got the most talented team, probably even going into the season, just looking in from last year. And of course, we go back and look at last year and the year before uh, film uh, in the game. Very talented team, very balanced team on offense and defense, create tremendous amount of turnovers lead the nation, have led the nation pretty much uh, the last few years in turnovers on defense, tackle very well, very athletic, very good in the secondary, uh, run the ball very well, give up very few points. I don't think anybody scored on them in the second half in the last few weeks. Uh, it'll be a challenge for our, def our offense. And then, of course, for our defense, uh, they've got one of the most dynamic players, not just in the conference, but in the country. Greg Ward, the quarterback, makes a lot of plays, He's hard to tackle, throwing the ball much better than he did over the last couple of years. And again, we played him uh, almost a half two years ago, a full game last year, and now getting ready to play another full game this year. So they uh, have more than just him, though. Their receivers are very good. Uh, they're very fast, and you know they're on a run. Going eight and zero, I don't care what league you're playing in, is very hard to do. And uh, uh, they're the front runner right now in all the polls of, of winning our conference. So we get our shot at them uh, as each team we get a shot at. And uh, we go to play them at their place. Uh, it's going to be hard for us uh, uh, knowing that, uh, you know, we've got to play better than what we played. But again, it is a challenge and our players look forward to going playing it. And, and again, playing the leader in our league. And I know Memphis is undefeated. But uh, we played Memphis, and I've been watching uh, this group on film now, and, and uh, they're good. They're real good. So uh, it'll be a good challenge for our team to see how we can play. And if we can play like we did last year, we were able to get a win right at the very end against Houston down to Paul Brown. Uh, they had three shots in the end zone at the end. We were able to hold on, and uh, uh, we'll see what we can do this year. Questions? You know, we really don't, we don't know, we'll give them Mondays off, and Sunday's really all about the game that we played. Uh, we do work them out. We said, a, we talked a little bit about this game. You don't want to get too quick into it too fast until you've got your game plan set. We pretty much had it set last night, real late in the night and uh, early this morning. And so we'll have our first meeting today at one o'clock with them, talk about uh, the season, talk about, you know, how we approach this game this week, and then Obviously, playing a road game against a team that uh, will be favored to beat us, and uh, how we approach that. So, hopefully, we can play with the intensity that we played with last week. We we got up, we knew what we were doing, we went and played, and things worked. Obviously, this is a different game, different team that we're playing. So, uh, uh, we'll find out a little bit more about this team this week. <clears throat> Quarterbacks rush for 16 touchdowns, leading the nation. I mean, so it's like running a wildcat every down. I mean, this kid, he runs it, throws it, gets out of pocket, makes big plays out of bad plays. 
He's what you're looking for. If you're going to run this type of offense, this is the perfect quarterback. He'd start for 99% of the other, other teams in this country. I mean, uh, you know, you look at when I mean, you look at this league at the quarterbacks. We got more quarterbacks in this league than most of the other conferences combined. Uh, I'm talking about real good quarterbacks and a different type of quarterback. So uh, this kid would uh, would he'd make a lot of teams uh, as good as their team is. You know, you just insert him on uh, some of these teams that uh, uh, are supposed to be pretty good. He'd bring them to another another level real quick. And so that's what's challenging for for your team is your defense to go in knowing you got to. You play defense. You got to tackle well. You got to contain well. You got to do all the things right. You, you one mistake, and and he takes advantage of it. Uh, but they know that they go into every game, every week, knowing, you know, what people pretty much is going to do, and they try to, they try to, uh, probably uh, counteract that with a few things. But again, uh, athletic ability at quarterback goes a long way. Yeah, well, I mean, we, we don't talk about rankings or stuff, you know, but it's good talk. I think it's good media talk. And it's good for, you know, to bring up once or twice. I, I, our guys know the challenge that, you know, they played this team. They understand the team. The game at Houston a couple of years ago was a very close game. We were fortunate to win it. The game here last year was going to be come down to the wire. We knew that, and that happened. We just need to put ourselves in a position, you know, to play any team that we play, whether they're ranked or not, in a position to win. And to do that against a team like this, we're going to, have to play much better than what we played, because this this group is uh, they're they're a step above most teams that we played this year. So, uh, you know, we we got the players have to accept the challenge. They got to understand we put a game plan in and all that. But you got to have consistency in a game like this. You got to be very consistent in how you play. You can't have the ups and downs because it'll get away from you real quick. You mentioned the other day about it's tough to to sit a guy who just went 15. Yeah, we'll do this. As I said, we'll do the same thing every week, and I think it's uh, it's helping Gunner. It's going to help Hayden. Hayden to know that uh, they're they're still in. I don't want a backup quarterback to say, okay, I'm just I'm kind of hanging around, and I don't have to get as prepared as the other guy, or even the starter. You know, I've got the starting position one. I don't have to get it. You know, I don't have to get any of that much. I'm the starter, and so both of them know going in the day that. Uh, We'll go today and tomorrow, and then we'll make a decision Wednesday night or Thursday morning, and then, then we'll go with the starter. And, it, you know, it's obvious that the way Gunner's playing, he's got an edge, but that edge could go away real quick, you know, if we, we if either one of them loses, if he loses his focus or Hayden loses his focus. So so we, we want to make both of them better, and that's what we're trying to do. We're, we're looking for two starters uh, because one could, you know, turn his ankle or whatever or get hit, and the other guy have to go in. And uh, I want both of them to know the game plan 100%. And I don't want to go into what we did last year and first part of the year just you know, just hoping nobody gets hurt. And we still hope that, obviously. We don't want anybody to get hurt, but we want to have the opportunity for the team to stay at the same level uh, if you know we put the next guy in, whoever it is. Chad Benchbach. Chad Benchbach. The Lawrenceburg Flash. Yeah. Leading rusher. Leading rusher. And I've been trying to, you know, he broke his hand in two days. And so he was out after surgery for, I guess, about a month into the season. And uh, he had shoulder surgery last year, at, I think, after the season. And so he's just been banged up. We, we need a guy that can, you know, can take the place of the, the other guys when need be. And uh, Alabama and m we just keep, ha we had to keep rolling our top three guys. Now, Chad's a good running back. Uh, he, we don't take any much of a step backwards. It's just, a, just the experience factor uh, from pass protection or running the football. Obviously, he doesn't have the speed the other guys have, but it was good to get him into the game and and uh, let him run and make some plays. And because it's good for the whole room in there, you know, when when a guy that practices as hard as he does finally gets in and gets his name out there and makes some plays, uh, it it brings the level of of uh, uh, team camaraderie up uh, a whole lot. And the young guys behind him say, hey, I work like Chad. I'm going to get in the game. He's not scholarship. You know, he's just a guy that comes every, every day with his 
work clothes on, goes to work, never says a word. Uh, play scout team a lot, gets the heck knocked out of him. But when his number's called, he loves to play. And that, you know, it's a game. That's the reason that you want it to be fun. And, you know, usually the things that you call a game are supposed to be fun, and he, he makes it fun. He's fun to watch. How did he get here? Uh, obviously, my son played at Lawrenceburg, and I, I was able to watch him play. And um, we were looking at him as, you know, try to get him to walk on. Uh, his preferred walk on, and then in a, a snow accident at Perfect, you know, he tears his shoulder up in off season. So he has shoulder surgery, and and uh, the next fall, uh, he just showed up one day to rehab his shoulder. And I talked to him about how you, when you get that thing well, we want you to come out, and uh, and he did. Once he got it well, he came out, and then he had to have it reoperated on because it was not the way it needed to be for a, a running back. It was giving him, still giving him problems, and so he had it reoperated on, and that's the level that he's gone to, gone through all these surgeries just to play college football as a walk-on and pay his own way. So, it's a great story. What would it take for him to get a he'll he'll eventually earn one if he stays after it, and of course I I, I have a soft spot in my heart for guys that work hard like him and several other guys, and as soon as we have the opportunity, we'll put them on on. Scholarship. You can't give a half scholarship in football. It's got to be all or none. And so he will eventually earn a scholarship here if he keeps working as hard as he's working. You kind of talked about before not to really get up too high, not too low. So, what kind of challenges for your coaching staff to be able to have these guys kind of level and go into a big matchup against you? Yeah, it's, uh, there's no way you can tie them down for a game like this. You know, when we played Memphis, we were ready to play, you know, because they remembered the year before. And uh, we played well. Uh, we had some unfortunate things happen in the game, some plays that went to the replay booth that didn't go our way. We, we, we didn't play as well on defense. We had several injuries as they've stacked up. And at that time, we weren't hitting on all cylinders, but we played with a lot of intensity. They look forward to conference games uh, much more than they do non-conference. And that's every league. And so what better way now to play the team that's really projected to to win our conference, to uh, possibly play in the plus one or get close to it and then play in the BCS, you get your shot. And so this is ours this week, playing against a team that we know is a very, very good team and we can kind of judge where we're at. And I know everybody said, well, you beat them last two years. Well, yeah, that's right, uh, we did. We, we beat them last two years and again, we hope to beat them again, but uh, they're gonna have something to say about that. They are. They, they are a, a team that's really, really improved the last few years. They've gotten better and better, and again, a lot of turning starters back. Connor Keel carried the ball five times in approximately half the game on Saturday. With this history of injuries, do you try to keep those carries down and avoid the read option play or not? Yeah, you can't do that. Not, not what we run. Because we, we've got a few plays that we run that he has to read. It's his decision whether to run it or not, you know, whether to hand it off or throw it. Uh, if you go back to the Memphis game, he chose to keep it on the first, maybe three out of first five plays and end up scoring a touchdown. Uh, for our offense to work, the quarterback's not going to run it a whole lot. But when they give you that opportunity, you got to take it. You can't be a, a guy that's just going to say, you know, I'm, I'm either going to hand it off or throw it. You've got to be a threat. And so if you're a threat, then you make our offense go better. So that being said, you know, we don't want him to get hit, you know, hard or any quarterback that we've got because they're hard to find, hard to train. And so we try to teach them to do the slide and all that. But we saw how the slide works in the Memphis game where he got knocked out. And uh, so uh, we will run him. We'll run both quarterbacks, but we don't. We're not going to run him like the, the kid runs at Houston because, I mean, he takes it to his himself to run the football a lot uh, to make a big play. We'd rather our running backs and receivers make the big plays. All the young guys you're playing on defense, obviously seem to be divided. <coughs> you know, anybody, one, two, or three of them really kind of start to pull away and pick up players that you maybe didn't see three weeks ago? Well, I think they've all got talent, but Ty Gilbert is really – getting a lot more confidence. He's tackling better in open field. He's around the ball, making big plays. He'll take a chance every once in a while to make that play. And 
sometimes, you know, when you're a safety taking a chance, you better make the play because if it might goes the other way, then it, it, it could be uh, bad for our defense. But all of them are getting more confidence. That's the big thing. We had no confidence going back Memphis and in some of those games in the secondary because they hadn't played and they're playing against some very good receivers and and grabbing guys last week. I don't think we had a pass interference. I think that's the first one we had in the first game we hadn't had in, what, four or five games. And we'd rack, racked them up. Uh, but it, that all has to do with technique and confidence in how you're playing. And they've gotten better. They, they've gotten better. Now we're not where we need to be. And, you know, hopefully we'll get, you know, Whitty's got a chance to come back maybe at the end of the regular season. Uh, but uh, we, the guys we got right now, they've got to go. I dare us Rafe should be back this week. I didn't play him last week because of tweaked ankle, so he should be ready to go. He's been around a while playing some big games. Do you still get jacked up for chances to go on the road and knock off the top 20 other teams? Well, it's, you know, it, it's a challenge. When you go on the road, you've got to take your best game, your best attitude, and you've got to make things happen. It's not going to happen for you. And so it, it's, we challenge our players to, to prepare better, uh, to get more focused. To go have fun, you can't go loose. You gotta, you gotta go in there and with the intentions to do everything you can to win a game, and you gotta take that from the coaching staff to the guys sitting in front of you in team meetings and individual meetings. You can't go in and, and, you know, think that if you make one mistake that you're going, it's going to cost you the game. I mean, you gotta, you gotta be thinking that you're going to make the one play that's going to win the game for you when you go on the road. So, well, there's not a lot of pressure on us. I mean, if you're eight and zero, there's a little bit of pressure. Uh, you know, you got to keep it, keep on keeping on. So uh, we'll take, we'll, we, we'll accept and take the underdog role. We'll go on the road and uh, see if we can play our best game of the year because that's what it'll take. Craig Ward, different kind of quarterback than Paxton and Trey. He, both, he throws apparently pretty well too. Together. You know that there's a different physical uh, <laughs> presence between Greg Ward and and. Uh, Lynch from from uh, Memphis, but both do the same. Both of them throw the ball well. Both of them run the ball well, and both of them like to run the ball. Uh, Lynch from Memphis uh, has won ball games this year with his legs, and so is Greg Ward. Uh, Ward be a better runner. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Ward's a much better runner. He he's elusive and he he loves to you pull it down and run the ball. And not, not saying that Lynch doesn't, but he doesn't have to as much because their passing game is built in for him to get the ball down the field. But uh, uh, two very different physical builds, but two very similar on the way guys get it done. They take the ball game in their own hands. And that's what you like out of a quarterback. Hey, I'm going I'm to do whatever it takes to win this game, whether it's throwing or running.